the third annual Tualatin Historical Society's Arbor Day Poetry Contest. My name is Mary Baylor, and I am the chair for this contest. Today, we will be sharing the beautiful poems by our finalists. But first, I'd like to introduce our judges. Lois Martinazzi, author, playwright, and Tualatin Historical Society co-founder. Cindy Dyson, local author and host of Poems by Heart podcast. Thank you. And Tom Swearingen, Oregon's Cowboy Poet Laureate and award-winning singer and songwriter. <laughs> this year, we had one of our youngest contestants ever and we are pleased to say that she was among our finalists. This is also the first time that we've had a three-way tie for our finalists. That's how close it was, and that's how good these poetry was. So uh, thank you again for coming. So now on to the poems. Let's see. Lindley Skinner for I Lay on My Knees for third place. Please come up, Lindley. <laughs> is called I lay on my knees. Trees, trees, I see all around me. I lay on my knees, listening, waiting, watching. I see birds dancing in the cool, soft, warm-hearted air. I know I found my place. Suddenly, I see a sweet, kind face. I hear her leafy green eyes watching all of her creations. She is Mother Earth. We live on her beautiful, beautiful world. Thank you. Here's your gift. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> Next for third place is Margot Strength for Family Tree. Okay. I'm honored to be here. My name is Margot Strength. This is for all of you who love trees, who sometimes talk to trees and believe they talk back. <laughs> okay, there is a lone tree I have admired. She stands tallest amongst her peers. Many a time I have sought for her through life's joys, sorrows, and tears. Her tall, majestic trunk once split into two, and I asked what could have caused this malaise. For now it is obvious something momentous had just happened, likened to our own suffering in many ways. Could it have been that strike of lightning that followed with thunder and so much rain when I shivered and I stayed warm inside, I did not check on her to my disdain. That tall tree once split over the years curved back into a hug. How parallel this lone tree's existence was to my own, I shrugged. For we all need each other to lean on, to share in one another's burdens and strife. How inspiring it is to gaze at and love this old trusted tree in my life. And lastly, I am calm and serene, you can't tell, <laughs> as the wind blows gently through her bows, for this is her place she can call her home, and she is welcoming me, and my heart overflows. So. And now, John Miller for Winter Trees. Thank you to the judges and the Historical Society. I went back after submitting this poem and tried to find out when I wrote it. And it turns out I wrote it uh, spring of 2021. So keep in mind our societal emergence from pandemic at that time. Winter trees. A look up from my screens through my usual window brings on an inhabitation from the sycamore in front 
To the five sister firs stand nearby. My eyes want to tremble or sway through their needles, remaining leaves. Join their storm robust branches that thicken bound to a trunk. Imagine their root tangles, plunging grip without hands into earth, become heart. Over time become canopy of the spring green displays of love that all the world will see. Thank you. And in second place, Rebecca Smolin for Teacher Tree. Thank you everyone for being here and thank you to the judges. The poem I wrote is uh, called a concrete poem which takes the shape of um, something you wrote about. So I have that. This is Teacher Tree. How many secrets can hide within a tree? Hypnotized by branches and roots, I could try to follow each one and get lost for days in that stare. Do I look at them all wrong? Should I invert this hourglass held by the heart of it and put attention more on the roots? Is that the part that sings? I keep my pen on the paper, hoping to hear it even now hoping to learn the secrets from a lifetime of listening, from before they speak of survival. Thank you. <laughs> and in first place, Trish, Trisha, Riz boy for this tree I love. Thanks to everybody. I love poems and I love trees, so I'm really grateful for this annual opportunity to express that love. This tree that I love, this tree sits so quietly now at the corner of the yard, next to the sidewalk like it does each year, after a long and glorious summer, its leaves turning from green to red and purple. Once it held so much laughter in its branches, branches that expand wide and full across the grass, and yet begin low to the ground, just right for climbing, in easy reach of small hands and feet. Its trunk forking in three ways, with room enough for small bodies to lift them up lift themselves up for a better view of the world, sometimes four or five at once, with smiling faces full of laughter, with imagination sailing out to sea on a pirate ship in search of hidden treasure, or climbing to the top of the castle to keep watch for intruders. But now it sits so quietly, this tree that I love, all those small children, grown and gone, scattered in the wind, like the leaves that will soon fall. Yet it is waiting patiently, this tree that I love, for it knows, as do I, that a child will soon come again, look up, grab on, and climb high. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, let's give them another round of applause for their work. Okay, and the judges. And okay. And this is the end of this poetry reading. Look forward to having seeing your poems next year. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>